أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قالت أمة منهم لم تعذون قوما الله مهلكهم أو معذبهم عذابا شديدا قالوا معذرة إلى ربكم ولعلهم يتقون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي I wanted to share with you ayah number 164 of Surah Al-A'raf Now we're in the ninth juz of the Quran And it has to do with the story of the people who violated the law of the Sabbath That they used to go and you know on, on Saturday Allah tempted or tested them By allowing the ship, the, the fish to actually jump out of the water shurra'an They would come out and make noise so the, the, the fishermen who were not allowed to fish on the Saturday were tempted by it and they violated the law of uh, the Saturday. And there were some among the Muslims who tried to avoid, you know, try, tried to warn them, tried to give them advice. So there were two camps. There were people who didn't care about what's halal and haram and they were just outright violating the Saturday. These are Muslims of that time, keep that in mind. And there was the people on the religious side who didn't violate the law. But even they were broken up into two further groups. Those two groups were one group of people said, we should, they're still our brothers, so what if they're not that religious? We should still go talk to them and say, look, you shouldn't be doing this, it's not right. And the other group said, no, those people are liberal, those people are you know, progressive, whatever they are. Forget them, Allah's going to destroy them anyway, they're a bunch of hypocrites. Why do you even bother talking to them? Don't even bother with them. So this ayah deals with th that conversation between these two groups of relig the religious, the abiding, those who were actually obeying the law of Allah and not violating the Sabbath, about whether or not they should even bother talking to the corrupt Muslims, right? Uh, again, Muslims, I say Muslims because these were the Muslims of that time. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ When a group among them said, لِمَا تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا اللَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ Why do you want, why do you want to bother, you know, why are you counseling a group of people that Allah is going to destroy. Or He's going to torture them, some really intense torture. Look at how hypocritical these people are. They are condemned to hellfire. There's going to be a group of Muslims who look at the sinful among the Muslims and just they want to just condemn, con condemn them to hell. That's what they want to do. Like these people are just, Allah has written them off. They were just made for the hellfire. That's what they're going to go to. Don't even bother giving them da'wah. These are, these are not really truly members of our ummah. And so they even come after the people who try to go talk to them. And now, even the people who go talk to them, they don't go tell them, you're, by the way, what you're doing is haram, you're going to burn in hell, etc. The word uses, لِمَا تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا تَعِذُون وَعَذْ actually means advice and counsel that is soft enough that it penetrates the inside of the heart. In other words, the people that were talking to the corrupt Muslims, were talking in a way that was actually appealing to those who were engaged in corruption. They were trying to reach their hearts before they would slap their hand and say, don't do this, right? They were trying to appeal to their senses and the, a reminder about Allah that would soften the heart. Which is really important to note that da'wah isn't you tell someone not, what not to do. Da'wah sometimes may be that you're trying to get them to remember, like Allah made you. Don't you know you have to answer Allah? You have to be grateful to Allah. Just thinking about Allah sometimes, you didn't even bring up that somebody's doing haram. You just reminded them of Allah a lot and they came to the conclusion that they were doing the wrong thing all on their own. Sometimes all people need is a reminder of Allah, not of what they're doing in front of you know, in front of you, so they just get defensive about their behavior. So, the group of dismissive Muslims, religiously, but they're dismissive of others, said, why do you bother giving these people advice? Allah is going to destroy them or punish them with some intense kind of punishment. See how confident they are about what Allah is going to do with them? Isn't that amazing? Like, like Allah told them, this is what He's going to do with these people? Well, how do you know they're not going to make tawbah? How do you know they're not going to come back? In, the, in one of the previous sessions, in this Ramadan I told you, you could be suffering from hypocrisy and you can still come back. Right? So who are they to just pass judgment on people like that? Now the people who did want to make da'wah to them, go and talk to the people who are in sin, even if they're Muslim, but they're in sin. They said one word response. It's so beautiful. قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ We're going back, we're going to go talk to them, and here's our rationale. مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ It will be an excuse before your master. Ya Allah, I couldn't stop them from doing this. I couldn't forbid them. I didn't have power over them. But they were my Muslim brothers. At least I tried to counsel them. At least I was sincere to them and spoke to them softly. At least I tried to connect you back to them. At least I have an excuse in front of Allah that I did something. That I didn't just sit back and condemn them, condemn them to hell. That I wrote them off. 
This is the attitude you and I are supposed to have towards the people engrossed in sin among the Muslims. We can't write them off. And we can't condemn them to hell and say, forget these guys. And the only time you talk to them is to let them know how sinful and evil they are. No, no, no. You have to do wa'ath to them. And the, the logic you have, the motivation you have to do wa'ath to them is because Allah will ask you, why did you abandon your brother? Why did you abandon your sister? Were they not Muslims? So what if they were corrupt? They were violating one of the most important laws given to the Jews, the, the Muslims of that time, the Sabbath. It's not, a, it's not a small haram, it's a big haram. Something Allah mentions several times, that they violated the Sabbath because He's offended by that. But still, you don't give up on them and you give them counsel and this will be an excuse before Allah, Ya Allah, at least I did my part. You called us an ummah and that means we don't leave anybody behind. مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ And here's my second motivation, maybe they're going to be people of taqwa in the future. Maybe they're going to become good people. How am I supposed to know? How can I judge? So there were two motivations, right? And this is what I leave you with. This is real food for thought. I hope I'm able to clarify what, I, what I'm trying to get across here. The first motivation to remind people who are far away from the religion and to try to counsel them in a soft, sensitive way. The first motivation is that you, the one who is reminding them, has to be able to justify their concern to Allah. They have to be able to say to Allah, Ya Allah, I was a concerned citizen of this ummah. I was concerned about my brother or my sister. Because Allah will ask you, why, were, why didn't you care? That's the first motivation. The second motivation is, who knows, they might turn around. So the first motivation isn't even about them, it's about yourself. Think about that. You know, مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ لَنَا يَعْنِي We will have the excuse. وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ And maybe they'll become good people, maybe they'll become people of taqwa. May Allah help us understand the courtesy and the love and the patience we have to have with those among our own that have fallen into sin. And may Allah help all of us come back to His way of taqwa. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ Quran Weekly.